the Moses Saunders Power Dam, short for Robert Moses Robert H. Saunders Power Dam, is a dam on the St. Lawrence River straddling the border between the United States and Canada. It is located between Messina in New York and Cornwall in Ontario. The dam supplies water to two adjacent power stations, the United States' 912 MW Street, Lawrence Franklin D. Roosevelt Power Project and Canada's 1045 megawatts RH Saunders Generating Station. Constructed between 1954 and 1958, the dam created Lake Street, Lawrence and is part of a larger project called the St. Lawrence Seaway. Aside from providing significant amounts of renewable power, the dam regulates the St. Lawrence River and affords passage for the navigation of large vessels. Despite the enormous economic advantages to the dam, it required the relocation of 6,000 500 people and caused harm to the surrounding environment. Positive efforts have been made over the years to improve shoreline and fish habitats. Background Development of the St. Lawrence River which serves as a border between Canada and the United States was in its early stages in 1871 when the Treaty of Washington was signed, which in part demarcated the St. Lawrence River as a boundary and offered Americans greater use of the Canadian side of the river for shipping. In 1895 the Deep Waterways Commission was established to explore expanded use of the river for for navigation, international shipping on the river would have a positive impact on trade between the two countries. The early street, Lawrence Seaway was proposed but railway companies in the United States stopped its construction because they felt it would reduce the profits. The Boundary Waters Treaty of 1909 further solidified cooperation between the U.S. and Canada on the river, allowing free and open navigation and establishing the International Joint Commission to resolve disputes. In 1931, New York's Governor Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the Power Authority Act which allowed the development of the St. Lawrence River for power use. A primary site was just below the Long Sioux Rapids. Despite the cooperation, the U.S. federal government was unable to open up the river for increased navigation and development due to political issues. Upset with this, Canada unilaterally passed two acts in 1951 which allowed projects on the St. Lawrence for power and navigation purposes. They pressured the U.S. to act and in 1952, President Dwight D. Eisenhower approved a hydroelectric Electric dam on the river. The next year, a proposal for a hydroelectric dam and navigation log was submitted to the IJC for approval. In October 1952, the project was approved. Because of political stalemate and the railway companies, construction did not begin until August 19, 1954, when the entire seaway project began with a groundbreaking ceremony at the dam site. Construction was expected to last seven years and much of which was supervised by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Chairman of the New York Power Authority, Robert Moses, oversaw the U. S. Portion and Robert H. Saunders, chairman of Ontario Hydro, oversaw the Canadian side of the project. The project included the main dam, the Long Sioux Dam, the Eisenhower Snell Locks, the Messina intake, and 10.9 miles of dikes. Four years later in 1958 the power station began generating electricity. The last generators were commissioned in 1959. Previously, in 1956, the IJC established the International Street, Lawrence River Board of Control as a mechanism to regulate the river above and below the dam. Competing interests for power and navigation had to be controlled in order to maintain good function of the dam. Those interested in power and flood control desired moderate water levels and the shipping industry and power station operators wanted levels to be higher negative impact. 
Arts. To construct the dam, 6,500 people in eastern Ontario were dislocated. Some farmers but predominantly the residents of six villages and three hamlets, known as the Lost Villages, before the land was flooded. The residents were given market value for the land, though there are claims it was unfair because the land prices were believed to have already been depressed due to the anticipated submergence. Some residents were forcibly removed. Most were relocated to homes in new communities called South Storm or Ingleside and Iroquois. In 2008, Ontario Hydro made an official apology. Power produced by the dam was the primary reason that General Motors, Reynolds Metals and the Aluminum Company of America opened factories in the area. These factories though severely polluted the river and are now Superfund cleanup sites. Flooding and pollution have affected fish populations on the river and in Lake Street, Lawrence. Northern Pike, Walleye, Muscalunge, Lake Sturgeon and American Eel have been affected. The loss of spawning grounds is also believed to have contributed to drops in the populations. Recent efforts have stabilized or increased much of the populations. An eel ladder was installed on the dam in the 1970s. At 521 feet long and 95 feet high, it was the only one in North America and the tallest in the world at the time. In recent years, it has been upgraded and extended 984 feet in length. Both New York and Ontario have instituted programs to improve the local environment around the reservoir and its water quality. The U.S. programs were mainly instituted after the power station was re-licensed for 50 years on October 23, 2003 rehabilitation and upgrades. After investigations in 1990 and 1991, it was determined that generator and structural problems within the dam were due to alkali aggregate reaction. The power station's concrete was cracking and deteriorating while the generator stators and throat ring linings were deformed. From 1993 to 2001 extensive repairs were carried out to fix damage concrete and mitigate concrete expansion. From 1987 to 2007 upgrades to R. H. Saunders Generating Station have increased efficiency by 16%. In 1998, the New York Power Authority began a $254 million refurbishment of the turbine generators at the St. Lawrence FDR. The project is expected to be complete in 2013. Design and operation. The 195.5 feet tall and 3,212 feet long dam is situated in between the Canadian shore at Cornwall and New York's Barnhart Island. To create the reservoir, the Long Sioux Dam was constructed 3.5 miles upstream in between Barnhart Island and one of the Long Sioux Islands. In between the Long Sioux Island the New York shore is the Eisenhower and Snell Locks. Located 7.5 miles upstream is the Messina intake. Further securing the reservoir is 10.9 miles of dikes. The Long Sioux Dam, completely in the U. S is 2,960 feet long and 109 feet high. It serves as a spillway to pass flood waters on the river. The Messina intake is 721 feet long and 108 feet high. It provides water for industry and local civil consumption. The power station at the Moses Saunders Dam contains 32 turbine generators. Ontario Power Generation operates units 1 to 16 and the New York Power Authority operates 17 to 32. The Canadian side of the power station, R. H. Saunders Generating Station, contains 16 by 65.3 megawatts fixed pitch Kaplan turbine generators and the U. S. Power Station, Street, Lawrence FDR contains 16 by 57 megawatts Veritkal fixed-pitch Kaplan turbine generators.
The dam affords the turbines 81 feet of hydraulic head. The Eisenhower and Snell locks can pass ships up to 730 feet in length and 76 feet wide, a height of 38 feet and 43 feet 